Okay guys, Paul Inventor 3 here. Been a few weeks I think since my last video here, so I gotta post something. Uh, I've probably done a two or three hundred experiments since my last video. <laughs> but uh, let me show you this setup right now, okay? Frequency generator, it's my primary coil, it's my secret sauce. One wire to a small coil, to a pancake coil, to two diodes, to a capacitor. Now I've got 20 volts applied now with my frequency generator. Voltage across the capacitor is 160 volts. Now let me show you this. Okay, no LEDs in the system at this time. Uh, there's the one wire going to a small coil. Comes up to my pancake coil, comes out to two diodes and then to each end of the capacitor here this is a microwave capacitor it's AC uh, so, and then I just got my voltmeter across there and you can see there's a hundred and sixty four volts and let me show you this now if I try to charge a couple triple A batteries uh, I believe they're NICAD rechargeable batteries but the thing is these batteries have been on my shelf probably six years or something I, I don't trust them there I have to go to the store and get some new ones so I really don't trust this experiment too much uh, hold on let's connect that there And I can't get a spark gap going. <laughs> we gotta experiment with the spark gap more. Anyhow, all right, now you can see the voltage 1.2445678. It's charging. One point two five eight. All right, I'm gonna let that go for like ten minutes, and we'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. It has been exactly ten minutes. Charging those two little batteries there, and we're now at one point three thirty seven six. Wait a minute, it was going up. It's going down. I don't know if it's because I'm near the system or what. Let's try to connect this little tiny small motor up here. Whoops. Nothing. Oh, yeah, it is. It's running. Whoops. <laughs> Come on. Oh, oh, come on! Before the battery drains out. There we go. It's draining. Too fast. <laughs> there it goes. Just stopped. <laughs> I did have a different scenario the other day where it was fighting you saw it it was it was uh keeping it charged almost all right let's uh take these batteries off all right now jumps right back up to 160 let's say 164 volts now Let's see this light bulb. It takes at least 115 volts to light. Oopsie. Oh. There it is, zap right on right away. Right, 16 volts. 
lights it up pretty good. Now if I take this bulb off, take the electronic guts out of there and just use the panel, then it only requires 75 volts. And we had 164, so I could light two of those panels really nice and bright in series with each other. Uh, let's take this bulb off. Back to 164 volts. Uh, now I know, too, I get double that voltage. So we're only playing with half the voltage right now half of our energy so anyhow let me try another setup and we'll be back all right now let me show you this setup here this was the last one this is almost the same thing we just added 10 LEDs in here I only have three drawn but there's 10 jumbo LEDs here. Uh, so it's just like the other one, just right in here. Well, now that I put these LEDs in there and they themselves are diodes, I could probably remove one of these diodes now. Uh, but anyhow, and then I also have this end which loops around back over here. And that prevents my LEDs from burning out. Without this wire, this loop around, these LEDs over at this end will be so blinding bright and they'll burn out. These LEDs over here will be very dim. So this is, uh, let me show you this one here now. Let's go around to the back side. Now on my last setup, the one I first showed you. This is my earth ground. I did not need it on the last setup. On this one, it's just a little bit better. You can see we got 169. Now I added the earth ground here. A little bit more. All right, so now let's connect our battery and see if there's any difference. Uh, negative. Positive. LEDs just got a lot brighter. Uh, 0.184 volts, 85, 86. All right, we'll be back in exactly 10 minutes again. Plus, now that I added this on here, I probably have to adjust the frequency slightly. So we'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, we're back. Uh, I just wanted to show you how bright those LEDs are now. And let's see, it's been 10 minutes. Let's walk around back there. Okay. Wow, they're still bright. And this is looking at the back side of the LEDs. Look at that battery now, the batteries. 0.247, that's all. Even though we're getting more voltage out of the system, the batteries are charging very slow. Very slow. Uh, I remember Rick Friedrich mentioning, I believe it was to use the negative energy. That's the trick. Uh, so we'll see. I'm going to keep doing some more experiments here. Let's, uh... All right, where's our little motor? I, I can't possibly see it doing anything at this point no yeah no all right let's uh, let's take those batteries off all 
All right, I'll be right back because I'm going to go over there and readjust the frequency now that I took that off. Hang on. All right, after readjusting the frequency, we got like 171 volts. Let's uh, put our bulb back on there. <laughs> the LEDs just got a lot brighter. Let's see. 115. Whoops. Let me readjust the frequency again. Hang on. Okay, I readjusted the frequency. We're at 115, well, 0.4 volts now. Actually, I have two resonant frequencies. And you can see at 2.110 megahertz, 114 across the bulb and cap. But at 1.670 is a little better. Now I'm trying to remember if our other setup, I'll have to watch his video back. <laughs> I could have swore we had more voltage across the bulb with our first setup, which only gave us 165 volts across the cap without the bulb connected. I'll have to look back. That's That would be odd. All right. Let me think about the next experiment. We'll be back, guys. Okay, after reviewing my last video clips, right, we did have 164 volts across the capacitor here. In this scenario, we had even more voltage. But when we put the bulb across there, we have less voltage. The 115 here, 116.4 here. Our bulb was much brighter in the first scenario. Uh, even the, the batteries across the cap, this was only a quarter of a volt. This one charged up uh, one point, or I'm sorry, uh, 1.337 volts. It would keep going if I went past 10 minutes, but still, I had another scenario that was faster. All right, so next, uh, I have to try all these same things now. Let me do a third setup here where I get over 300 volts across the cap. So we get the positive and the negative. We'll be right back. Oh, I just wanted to mention one more thing here. Uh, I mentioned about being able to remove a diode here now because we already have these in here. So I was. I took out both of these diodes and I just have it going here to one side. So there's no linkage here. No diodes. Well, except for the LEDs. And I get the exact same results. So just wanted to let you know that real quick. Those two are unnecessary. Okay guys, here is scenario number three. Now, this is where we get both halves, positive and negative energy, and we double our voltage pretty much. Uh, I forgot to, in my last experiments, I forget, but Ah, this is an AC capacitor. When I go to connect my batteries off of here, I should probably try a full wave bridge rectifier on there. And I feel bad about that. Now, that might have just thrown my last experiments in the garbage with the battery thing. Uh, you can use a DC capacitor here. It works fine, too. In that case, if you use a DC here, then this diode becomes unnecessary. You need this diode here if this is AC. So, uh, let's go take a look at that now. 
Okay, we're on the back side here. 314. It actually depends on how close I am to my system now. <laughs> so, alright. I had like 320 until I walked back here. I've also got this little Abramenko plug that's just aiming at the coil over there. Uh, okay, so now the 300 over 300 volts. I'm going to connect those two little batteries up and we'll be right back. We're going to try it first with hooking them up directly here. And then we're going to try it again. This time, this time using a full wave bridge rectifier in between the capacitor and the batteries. And then we'll try the bulb. We'll be right back. Boy, again, these LEDs just get blinding when I add those batteries on there. Hold on. <laughs> Even looking at the back side of them. Alright, but anyhow, we're still only at 0.265 volts. Eight, sixty-nine, seventy. It's charging, but very slow. You know what? I'll be back in exactly ten minutes. Okay, it's been ten minutes now, and we're only up to point four four one. It does keep going up. It is charging, but it's taking quite a while. Uh, I should wait a little bit longer and then connect our motor up to it. And we got to try the bulb yet. You know what, just in this scenario, I'm going to wait another 10 minutes and see how much higher that gets. I mean, no, it's not going to get that much higher, but we'll be right back. Okay, guys, it has actually been officially a half hour now. I've waited instead of another 10 minutes, I waited another 20 minutes. I've also noticed the battery is charging a little faster when my voltmeter is turned off. You can still see it's still charging. So now, let's uh, connect our little motor up here. I'm anxious to see what the bulb gets across it. It's spinning fast, but yeah, it's draining it real quick, man. And it stops. Okay, let's try that bulb again. I'll be right back. Okay, there's our bulb. It's nice and bright. It's 116.1 volts. Ah, uh, so, this is scenario number three. What's best? Scenario number one, I had 116.4 four volts. That could just be a minor adjustment of uh, other things that I need to tune into to, you know, tune in a little bit. 
I mean, it's not much. But it's surprising. We've doubled our voltage. But yet we're still getting the same amount across that bulb. But we should be able to get two bulbs in series now. Not in parallel, in series. Uh, and we still have to try full wave bridge rectifier to the batteries. Alright, so it's getting late guys. There is a fourth scenario I wanted to try. And I had this coil in a coil. And I want to try that with the battery and the bulb. Uh, I'm also going to try winding I wish I had a much bigger ferrite rod uh, this core I'll try to wind a transformer on here I would like to do it with a much larger core I have to order one from eBay or somewhere and use much thicker wire but and I'll put this in place of my primary coil and see if we can't get a boosted boostage in voltage but for tonight we're gonna end this video uh, next time we're gonna pick up with this fourth scenario coil and coil which is interesting but I'm not sure if it gives the same amount of power depends on how we do things here it's it's this Rubik's Cube thing guys What's the best way to skin that cat? So anyhow, please subscribe, give it that thumbs up, please share, and we'll see you again real soon, guys. Here's with the lights out. Gives off quite a bit of light. So do those LEDs if you're looking right at them. Alright guys, good night.